Welcome to Quake Live, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Mad Mayhem, real first-person shooter deathmatch is. I haven't played in Quake for quite a time, and it clearly shows. No positioning, not taking care of angles at all, and miserable aim. Here you see me, totally disoriented, overstrained, and generally unable to cope. Two guys jump to the left, and they did me jumps to the left too right into suicide. Catapults me to the bottom end of the roster, deservedly so. One decent rail hit at last. But then three misses and fracked again. Respawn. Getting the plasma and doing one frag with it. Startled by the battlesuit guy and down in the abyss we go. <laughs> Rinse and repeat. There is the battlesuit guy. Did you see that? Let's have it again. <laughs> Never occur to me to just look up. And there he is again. The rules of free for all are quite straightforward. You spawn in a map, in this case together with the seven others. There are no loadouts, no classes, no special character abilities. Every player's avatar features the exact same qualities. At match start, your health is 125, armor zero. You only have a machine gun and the gauntlet with its whirling electrocuting buzzsaw blade. And then, the brawl begins. Think of Battle Royale or The Hunger Games, but much, much faster. Free for all means everyone against everyone that much. Put in official words, it's every man, woman and sinister alien being, for him, her, itself, as the players frag everything that moves to get the most points. Kill or be killed. By fragging another player, you gain one point. By dying from suicide, fall damage or the environment, you lose one point. The first player to reach the frag limit wins the round. It is set to 50 frags in this match. If nobody hits the frag limit within the round time, set to 10 minutes here, the player with the highest frag count wins. I know what you learned from roaming the battlefields. Replenishing your health by cowardly camping in the corner. You'll just forget about that. In Quake Life Free for All, you have to pick up everything on your way. Weapons, ammunition, armor, health, and the occasional power. Every time you spawn, your health is 125, counting down to the default 100. Maximum is 200. Being hit by enemy projectiles, splash damage from exploding ordnance, fall damage and environment hazards like lava, slime and so on diminish your health. Once your health is zero, you die. After a short delay, you are able to respawn. You start out with no armor at all. By picking up different armor items, you can stock it up to a maximum of 200. Armor absorbs two-thirds of the damage received. The remaining third is subtracted from your health. There are people who say that free for all isn't a real game mode. Compared to, for instance, Team Deathmatch, Capture the Flag, or the one versus one duel prominently featured in esports. Because free for all on the surface looks so chaotic, it might seem that the outcome is purely haphazard. And yes, my own gameplay here very much appears to bolster that view. Nevertheless, 
I am of a totally different opinion. There are veteran expert players out there who dominate nearly every free-for-all match they are in. For that you need aim, map knowledge, angler awareness, positioning, timing, advanced and controlled movement, as once again aptly demonstrated by yours truly here. <laughs> Hellsgate originally is a map for one versus one duel. So, by design, it is not really meant for free for all. With only eight people in the map right now, it still occasionally feels quite crowded, but adds a lot to the impression of chaos. But even within this confined map, with its narrow catwalk in the center, movement patterns and planning ahead can be used to gain an advantage. Granted, because of the perimeter's tightness, the tactical and strategic levels most of the time conflate. Nevertheless, sometimes, even at Hull's Gate, the opportunity arises to ambush an enemy. Sneaky devil. The only power at Hull's Gate is the battle suit. For 30 seconds, it absorbs 75 of incoming damage. It also protects from hostile environmental conditions and splash damage. At Hull's Gate, the battlesuit spawns right in the center of the map on the catwalk above the Red Abyss. Power-ups first spawn somewhere between 30 and 60 seconds into the match. From then on, they respawn every 120 seconds after having been taken. Besides the battlesuit, there are three other power-ups in Quake Live. Quad damage, regeneration and haste. All three not present at Hell's Gate. All four power-ups last for 30 seconds. If a player carrying a power-up is fragged, the power-up is dropped. It then can be picked up by another player to enjoy the remainder of the original 30 seconds. In free-for-all matches, the power-ups more often than not are key. So, the idea is to at least time when the power-ups spawn and grab them something I do not do at all in this match. Instead, I am assaulting the battlesuit carrier. Alright, I am hereby officially voting for a new achievement. Kill the battlesuit carrier three times in three seconds. No matter by what weapon. Besides the defaults gauntlet and machine gun, there are three more weapons available at Hell's Gate. The rocket launcher, the rail gun and the plasma gun. The rocket launcher is most popular. It does 100 damage on a full direct hit and has a reload time of 800 milliseconds. It's a projectile weapon perk, meaning the missiles have a travel time, so you have to lead the target. But then again, the rockets explode whenever they hit something and deal a maximum of 84 splash damage. That's the reason why you see people aiming at the lower legs of their opponents. The railgun is the hit scan weapon, dealing 80 damage per hit. This comes at the cost of a 1.5 second reload time. The plasma gun does 20 damage every 100 milliseconds. 
That means a maximum damage of 200 per second. Sounds pretty nice. But the projectile qualities make it maybe the most demanding weapon in the game. One frag to go with the leading player. Grab two plasma guns and go all in. No skill. Pure luck.